Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the high-low method. Why do we use the high-low method? Well, most costs are mixed. And what does it mean it's mixed? It, it means it has a fixed portion. It means it doesn't change with the activity and the cost will have a variable portion. So it's a fixed plus variable. So we can express total cost with the following equation. Total cost equal to the fixed cost plus the variable cost. Now, why is this important? Well, costs behave differently. The way fixed costs behave is our fixed cost per unit goes down as our activity goes up. Variable cost increases in total with the number of units produced or the number of activities. So the business wants to know which portion of their total cost, this is total cost, is fixed and which portion is variable. Also, this formula could be expressed as Y, which is total cost, equal to B plus MX. B is the fixed component and M is the variable cost times the activity, whatever that activity is is x. So there's many ways to express this, but basically it's based on that algeb algebra formula where it says y equal mx plus b. So y equal, maybe you learn it in algebra mx plus b. Okay, so hopefully you are kind of familiar with this equation. So here's what we do. The first thing we do is when we have a bunch of data, what we do is the company will have to basically first get a, get an idea whether there's a relationship, some sort of a linear relationship between two factors. Here, what we're looking at is the number of tra travelers for a particular airline, you know, Southwest Airlines, Spirit, or whatever, and the cleaning department cost. And the cleaning department is the crew that cleans the plane after you leave and the, the crew that cleans the terminal. And this is important now for airline companies with COVID. They want to make sure that they're cleaning their terminals and planes very well for the next batch of travelers. So the first thing they should do is to kind of eyeball the data by drawing a graph, see if there's any relationship between the number of travelers and the cleaning department. So I'm going to be doing so using Excel, but you could do, you can do this manually. So I'm going to highlight the data, go to chart and basically draw this chart. And basically on the X axis, I have the number of travelers. Here's the X axis, number of travelers. As the number of travelers increase, and here's the cost, it looks there is some sort of a relationship between the two. So yes, it's worth looking at determining which component of our cost is fixed and which component of our cost is variable. And the reason we want to know this is we might be able to switch the fixed cost into a variable or maybe the variable cost into a fixed. Maybe it's beneficial from a business perspective. So one way to do so, there's more than one way. One way to do so is to use the high, high, low method. Now, how does the high-low method works? Well, we're going to look at our activity, which is here the number of travelers, not the dollar amount. Remember, it's based on the activity. And we're going to look at the highest level, the highest month of activity. In June, we had 1,900 travelers. In the lowest month, in November, we had 1,100. At this point, we are going to basically compute the slope of the line. And how do we compute the slope of the line? Hopefully, you know how to do this from your math course. Otherwise, I'm going to review this now. Before we review how to compute the slope of the line, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course nor your accounting course. I'm a useful addition to your CPA exam preparation and your accounting course. How? I provide you resources. I provide you explanation from a different perspective for your accounting courses as well as your CPA examination and CMA. This is a list, a partial list of my accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your Becker, Roger, Becker, Gleam, or Wiley, or even Miles, or any other CPA review course. And I also give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions in their original format plus detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. I'm trying to grow my Instagram followers. Please connect with me on Instagram. So how do we compute the slope of the line? We're going to take the difference in the dollar amount, which is in, in, in our case, in this situation, is the difference between 15,200 and 12,800. And that's going to be the difference in the dollar amount. And we're going to divide this by the difference in the activity. So the difference between 15,200 and 12,800 is 
2,400, and we're going to do the same thing for the activity, the difference in the activity level, which is 1,900 minus 1,100. Now we'll take the difference, but uh, we divide y, you know, y is the uh, 2,400, and x is the activity. We divide them, and we find out that the slope of the line is 3. What do we conclude from this? Here's what we can say. We can say it's costing us $3 per traveler. So this is the variable cost. Now, what is the fixed cost? We really don't know what our fixed cost is, but we can find or approximate our fixed cost. Now, remember, this is a good approximation, a good ap approximation. Why it's a good approximation? Because we're only going through two line, two, two data, two points of data. We're not going through the whole data. So how do we do so? So let's assume we select uh, 1600. The point of 1600 okay we said if we have 1600 travelers our cleaning cost should be 14,000 well so 14,000 so this is what the formula looks like the total cost 14,000 should equal to the variable cost which is three dollars times three dollars times 1600 plus the fixed cost that we don't know so what is three dollars times 1600 so we're going to find out the variable cost three times 1600 1600 travelers so the variable cost the variable cost is 4800 well we still don't know what the fixed cost is we know our total cost is 14000 if we take the total cost 14000 which is it's giving from the data from our accounting department and we deduct the variable cost we find out that the fixed cost is 9200 so what is the total cost now let's let's see if we were how close are we to 14000 4800 plus 9200 it's exactly 14000 it's exactly 14000 is this going to work in every point let's see if we choose for example the 1100 well if we chose the point 1100 our total cost should be 12000 800 so I, I i choose i'm choosing this point and you're going to see why i'm choosing another point to illustrate the concept so let me just highlight this so you see which one i am discussing so at this point our variable cost should be 1100 times three okay this is our variable cost our fixed cost then it should be if the total cost is 12800 our fixed cost should be 9500 and if we take this amount plus this amount, it should, oh, it's 3,000, oops, let me go back. Let me do it one more time. If we take 3,300 plus 9,500, it will give us 12,800. Okay, so notice here that our fixed cost, it was in this example, 9,200, in this example, 9,500. So it's approximately between 9,000, maybe it could be around 9,200 to 9,500. We can select another point and it's gonna give us something in that ballpark. So, you know, we know the variable cost is three, approximately three. Now, why is this not accurate 100%? Because we are going through only two points of data. Now, luckily we could have regression. Um, we could have different type of things, but let me show you what Excel could give us. If you click on those points and let's assume I want to do first of, first of all, I can do a trend line and I see my trend line is upward. So it, it looks, you know, as we have, as we have more travelers costs go up. Now we can let, we can let Excel uh, display the equation this equation, the total cost equation, and this is what it looks like. And if we look at Excel that goes through all the points, it looks like the variable cost Y equal to $2.64, approximately $2.65, plus the fixed cost is approximately 9,994. Is this true all the time? Not necessary because we can, let me go back here and use some, use some, uh, use some statistics. We can have an R square, and based on the R square, this relationship holds 71% of the time. So it's not, there is a linear relationship, but it's not perfect, perfect, but it, it's approximately, it looks like it's, you know, $2.65 per traveler, not $3. This is, this, I would say this is more accurate. And the fixed cost, always say it's approximately 9,900. Notice here when we did two points, at some point, the fixed cost was 9,200 at another point was 9,500. 
what, what Excel tells us, it should be approximately 9,900. Once again, those are estimate. It's a good starting point in understanding your total cost, which is part of your cost is fixed cost, part of it is variable. And why do we have to know this? Why do we have to know fixed and variable? Because fixed and variable behave in a different way under different circumstances as a total and as per unit. So it's very important that you understand how costs behave. And if you understand how costs behave, then the company can change their cost structure. For example, they might benefit if they have more fixed costs or they might benefit more if they have more variable costs, depending on their business, depending on their resources, depending on their strategy. And this is basically in a nutshell, the high low method. What should you do now? Go to my website, farhatlectures.com, work multiple choice questions, look at the additional resources, download this PowerPoint slide, and this Excel sheet and play with it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.